Anything can be a dildo. It's only a matter of bravery. Come here, ma! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Hello there, my name is Aldo Bokter, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as the prehistoric Trinoceros. In this video, we'll be going over the following topics. Stay to the end to learn how you can suggest a creature. Two slots for head abilities and two head abilities, so you can equip both. The first one being a thousand years of pain. The second ability, I basically just loop to make this stuff sliding easier. The sense abilities basically makes you choose between introverted power and extroverted power. Two options for front limb, the first one being balance that improves your turning speed. The stomp ability can be quite powerful as there's a lot of weight behind it, not the ability, on the creature. I'd only got basic resilience scale. The leg abilities have two options, the first one being surprise pitch. This ability can surprise most people as you can move so fast despite being so fat. Strong legs are just an innate ability all your tracks should have, as at all they need strong legs to carry around their fat asses. Pretty sure out of the official creature, the Eotrike are the biggest fat ass of them all. If you're going to play solo, this is the arsenal I recommend for all creatures. There's a good reason to why I chose balance over stomp ability. You see, when you fight fast creatures, the ability are just easy dodgeable. What's more, the bigger the creature, the less effective the stomp is. What I mean is you can only one-shot small creatures. The Eotrike does not have any backward-facing attacks, meaning that if you get tail-ridden, then you are basically doomed. Being able to turn quickly will make it more difficult for your opponent to tail-ride you, and it will make it easier for you to counter-attack. The Strong Legs ability doesn't really do much for you. You are one of those creatures where being bone-broken doesn't really mean much. I'll talk more about that when I come to fighting style. As to why you should choose Charge, well, sure the attack can be dodged, And if you do miss, then that is just a waste of stamina on your part. However, if you do hit, and if you do it with the added damage from the sharpened horns, then the damage delivered will be huge. And of course, if you do fighting groups, then I would just change from Lone Survivor to Stampede. When it comes to subspecies, I would choose the extra boost in attack. You see, due to the way the Eotrek fights and the fact that his stamina recovery are just absolutely trash, you need to aim to finish the fight quickly, or at least before your stamina runs out. You need to be selective on when you should move quickly and when you should use your stamina draining abilities. Any waste of stamina can be fatal for you. You can't do much without stamina, but when your enemy is low, that's when you should push for the kill. Now, stamina regeneration is a good second option, however, it is more suited for longer battles and long outfights aren't really good for Triceratops. When it comes to terrain compatibility, you see, any open area kinda works, however, I don't recommend completely open areas. Try to have some hindrances that can limit your opponent's movement. After all, the fighting style of a trike is that of a head-to-head -head clashing, and it's a complete champion in it too. Bone break are supposed to stop opponents from running, however you have no need to run, as you can win most head-to-head -head clashes. A tribe may be good in head-to-head -head clashing, but that doesn't mean you can underestimate T-Rexes completely, especially not the official T-Rex. An official T-Rex with a combination of face tank and deep rumble will be too much for a trike, even with sharp and horned. In those cases, you should just wait until the deep rumble effects wait off, about 30 seconds or so. If you don't, then you will experience the T-Rex's max potential in defense. And again, having a few hindrances in the terrain might help you against faster opponents. Speaking of small and fast opponents, low tears. Speedy little demons, and as a fat, slow creature, they are a nightmare to try and hit. On an open field, you might as well stir yourself up on a silver plate. 
best course of action is to back yourself up in a place where they can only attack you from one direction, and then you let them pounce on you. If they are unfortunate enough to jump right next to your head, then that is just a perfect way for you to counterattack. It is when they're on your butt that you have no other choice but just to stay still and shake them off. It doesn't have to be right beside a cliff. It can be in tight areas, where they have less room to move in. If they do pounce on you right beside water, then you can just walk out into the water, go out to the deep and then wait for them to enter the swimming animation. Of course, do be careful, the water's edge is a dangerous place, even for you. Mintiers is a little different. If anything, they know the difference in stat, and they usually run away. Which is a bummer. I mean, seriously, let us fight you unfairly. Come on, what's there to be scared of? It's just a fat, horny guy. If they do decide to fight you, then just force them into a head-to-head -head clash. Of course, their first instinct will be to tail ride you. This is a good learning opportunity for you. You can learn on how to bait properly and how to properly use the precise movement. Mid tiers will usually try to fight you in a group. Your combat plan are still to try and force them into a head-to-head -head clash. You just need to be more selective on when to use your abilities. Save your stamina, save your abilities, and when you see a chance, take it. Two mid-tiers are doable. If there's three, then it might get a bit more challenging. Apexes are the only ones you can actually force into a head-to-head -head clash. Mostly because you're an Apex yourself and you're both a slow creature. What's more, they probably know that they can't win a head-to-head -head clash with a trike. Or well, they can't do it easily. Have Sharpened Horde activated early in battle, make sure that they can't tail ride you, and then just force them into a head-to-head -head clash. As a trike, this is the standard plan against any Apex, with the exception of an official T-Rex with a combination of face tank and deep rumble. Again, just keep your distance from those until the effects runs off. If you have any specific creatures you want me to cover and you don't know how to suggest them, go to my community post. Find the most recent post regarding the matter and everything should say right there. With that, there's nothing more to say. I thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.